Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. This is Seth. He's from nowhere. And this is Mark with Men's Breakfast Club. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I well, take it back. I regretted it immediately. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Great to see you. Good to see you, boy. Good to and, see you, uh, Homer. We are continuing the opening of the Tobacco Advent Tobacco. Thank you once again for those of you who participated. And uh, this package comes from our buddy Dodif. Dodif down in, uh, in Texas. And Dodif... Major dominator in the Cobb Foolery contest in years past. Uh, he has taken first and second place in a number of those. In fact, after winning the amateur a couple years in a row, I forced him to move into the pro mm -hmm. category. And uh, he sent this tobacco. What is this? He says, Hello, men! Exclamation, exclamation. Hello. Hope all is well. Here is a sample of some chocolate tobacco from my local tobacco shop. It's a house blend. I'm not a huge aromatic fan, but I also know you're not a huge English fan. Hopefully, you two will enjoy. Take care. Thank you, Dota. I'm going to smoke this since I, um, I'm not a big chocolate fan. No. <laughs> I'm going to smoke this in, in one of my least favorite shapes. <laughs> this is the Patriot, and I just don't get it. Why is that the Patriot? I don't. Why, I, where does the name come from? Well, it was I've seen of, the Patriot. The Patriot should be more like a tomahawk or a flag. It's part of the 1776 collection. So I really just want to, to wrap some thread around it and stick a needle in it. Here's the thing about this like. pipe. It has a very small bit, very small and narrow stem and shank. Mm. In fact, it's so small, it's what we call the slim bit. It is so small, there's no room for a filter. And in fact, we could take this little bit off of the end of a Morgan nose warmer and it will fit into a Patriot, turning the Patriot into a nose warmer. Huh. It's got this very large... I kind of like it better that way. Yeah, it's got this large rim on it which serves no purpose except for it to look a little bit like a smokestack. Or maybe it's a top hat. I don't know. You know um, what it looks like? It looks like a, uh, a candle uh, putter snuffer. powder. Yeah. yeah. Um, the tribe has spoken. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly so, right. So to me, it we just, call this the survivor around it here. It just it adds unnecessary weight, girth. But it it's but then it's transferred to my mouth right. with a small bit. Yeah. I don't get that, but yet we have people that love this. Well, part. and because of the long bit, it's. it's I'm, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to go ahead and smoke it this it. way because this and is just going to exacerbate the weight well and just just so you know if you don't already know this when you buy your pipe you can swap these we give you the instructions as you place your order you can choose the color of bit you want but you can also swap it out for this one and vice versa you could put this bit on let's let's do this let's stick this on a no morgan nose warmer all right check that out yeah isn't that an interesting looking pipe now the one thing I don't like about the nose the nose warmer the only thing because I'm a huge uh, small pipe fan and nose warmer fan is when using the patented Aristocob uh, pipe tamper. Um, this is this is one of the only pipes where you need a pipe cleaner over the tamper to get any blockages because the the bore in there is just too narrow. Right, right, for right. This to you, go through. Yeah, you use your So, I don't do that. I you I use do your this on, tip of the tamper down the on shank. On occasion, on occasion if I ever get bits and and, and pieces stuck in there if I'm, if I'm ever just packing it too right. aggressively, I will do that as needed and you can't get it out with this like you can in some of the larger pipes. I don't do that. I never I, do that I, with those uh, those tampers. I do have had that happen on on occasion, uh, which is why the lighter bro is a great solution. What a stupid <laughs> lighter bro! Uh, my boss at work uh, was very excited one day uh, to show me this thing that he he bought, and he he pulled it out and said, "Oh, lighter bro!" I, I know that. I know that very well. It's uh, totally pointless. You want another one? <laughs> unless unless you need a very small poker for your nose warmer. All right. I can't believe this is one of the one of the first uh, stupid gimmicks we bought. Uh, this is probably what three and a half years old. The lighter that's in here is 
three and a half, three and a half years old, it's still going strong. It's a big. It's still got. It's like, yeah, but we. This is the only big we haven't lost in the shop. Yeah. I don't know where any of the others are. You know why? Lighter I, bro. I, I take them. Lighter bro. Yeah, and and no one wants to take the lighter bro. <laughs> it has its purpose. So the lighter bro is kind of like having a, a pen on a chain at the bank. Yeah. It keeps you from taking off with it. Wait. The chain is for the pen? I thought the chain was for the desk. <laughs> you know, they're both always there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, something about this combination, by the way. We just got in a, a three brand new-ish shapes that are part of a series called the Outlaw series. And I have been reluctant to sell these. And I'm sure by now I've already done a video about these on the Aristocop channel. Doing. Where I explain the fact that I just don't feel like giving any credit to Outlaws. It's just this weird Puritan side of me that says I don't want to be smoking a pipe that's been dedicated to an Outlaw. Mm. I'm weird. Yeah. And they, they put a they they printed the side of the pipe with a, a face of a guy with a bandana over his face. And part some of the shapes are very, very similar to this. Slightly different, but very similar to that. And again, unless you're gonna hold the pipe, that weight is additional weight while I'm clenching that I, I don't need. So this is the I'm about to blow your mind. This is the stupidest thing that a guy selling pipes would ever do, but talking negatively about a particular shape. But we all have our own opinions. I'm about to blow your mind. You're smoking an outlaw pipe. Potentially. If we're talking revolutionary patriots. They were outlaws. Ooh. Yeah, but they were fighting for a just cause. Uh, I believe there are many outlaws who would make that argument. <laughs> now, you're smoking the Mark Twain, which is a Dublin-shaped pipe, and of course it's named after Mark Twain because he's most noted as being the most Irish of all Missourians. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, know, I know when I think Mark Twain, I think Irish accent. I wish I could tell a story like Mark Twain. Ah. Uh, All right, enough of the small. Talk. What is it? What is the deal with this shape, though? It's called a Dublin. Okay. In briar pipes, that shape is called a Dublin. Okay. There, theoretically, that shape will smoke a um, a flake better. And why? I don't know. You know, maybe maybe as you begin to smoke this, you're going to get a well the potential of this growing much larger here right. um, is there. At least you have this massive corn cob that this is made from. So, I don't know. <clears throat> it seems but, to me like it should have been, it should be bored with a large tapered bit, and that's not the way it's done. Right. That I mean, that so theoretically, it won't actually burn with the taper. No. The, the burn, because it's a straight, a straight uh, hole, it's going to burn outward, just like any of the other pipes. Mm -hmm. So... And I don't see the advantage. With the exception of that one, <laughs> they're bored with the same diameter drill bit, about a three-quarter inch drill bit of uh, that's used for the country gentleman and the the um, the general and all the others. This one I pulled out of like my inventory because it was drilled the wrong size, and uh, so it yeah, comes to the see. shop and and boy smokes it. Yeah, look at that. A nose warmer's got a bigger bore than that one. Yeah. Well. But that's not that's not the case normally, and uh, so there you go. Thanks. So, boy, yeah, it's a new week since we're talking about outlaws. Uh, why don't you talk about a weapon? What, what this is a transition for you? Oh, it is. Uh huh. Oh, I, see what you, I see what you did there. If you will, I won't. Um, yeah, I I I wanted to share a toy, um, as we want to do. So I believe. Wrangle Star. Last year, I believe we spoke about this. Um, I got this uh, late in the summer of last year. This is the Mora Knife, uh, or Mora Knife, uh, Niv, Neve. 
Um, it's Swedish. Uh, this brightly colored knife is um, one of Bushcrafters all over YouTube, their favorite uh, $10-$15 knife. And it is no surprise why. It is a, a Swedish steel. Um, you can get it in carbon steel as well. This is stainless. Um, why would someone, if you're a knife novice, why would someone want <clears throat> high carbon steel as opposed to a stainless steel knife? So the advantage of high carbon steel is it's going to retain an edge longer. It's going to um, keep a, a sharper edge. The disadvantage is it's going to be prone to, more prone to uh, rust. Because it's not stainless. Because it's not stainless. Uh, and, and while it will take a sharper edge, I take that back, it's going to take a sharper edge, but the stainless is going to keep the edge longer. So the high carbon, you'll, you'll have to sharpen more often. If you want something that you don't want to have to maintain, the stainless is, is going to be the but way the high, to go. The high carbon, though, will take a sharper edge. Right. So you see a chef, chefs tend to use high carbon steel knives, right. and they'll hone that knife right before they carve some meat because right. they need to get that edge to just a super fine. Yeah, fine yeah. so, so if, if, if you don't mind sharpening your knife frequently, if you've got sharpening stones or, or you've, you, you, know, you, you have good technique, um, high carbon is definitely the way to go if you're going to take care of it. If you need something that's just going to be a beater, that uh, you know you, you, you're not ever going to sharpen, but once every few months or once a year, um, and you just need it to hold uh, a decent edge, stainless is going to be the way to go. Um, so this knife, I believe, was like ten, maybe twelve dollars with the sheath. I got the obnoxious orange because uh, it's obnoxious, but it's easy to see. Um, we got this, my brother-in-law and I got this for a, a camping challenge video that we were doing where we were going to be doing some, some <clears throat> just normal camp stuff. And this was perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, it is sharp as the day I got it. It's got a rubberized handle. It is, uh, the sheath just works. It, it fits on your belt real easy, easily and simply. It's great. There are some great videos of people like Wrangler Star, other bushcraft people. <clears throat> and it clicks um, in place. Yeah. Wrangler Star is a, a homesteader. Um, there are bushcraft videos where they've taken this and, and literally tried to beat the snot out of it, and it still holds an edge. They can't get it to break. Um, it just it stands up to a beating. In fact, a lot of the videos are them comparing this to a $500 knife to see which one, which one will win and take a, a bit better beating. Of course, the $500 wins. But for ten dollars, this is always an impressive competitor. So, do you have the version that Wrangler Star owns? Yeah. So he has mentioned these several times. He one of his favorites is Everyday Carry is a neck knife, um, which is a much smaller version of this. I don't have that, but one of the ones that he he talked about as his daily kind of utility knife is this one. And, and there are just a few differences immediately, other than the color. Um, the sheath here is slightly different. It's got a notch here and a spot here on the back where you can actually interweave these if you wanted to have multiple knives in a row. Uh, the knife also has a flat spot where it can be hit and the reason why is this is a chisel knife. Um, the front here is a blade and the edge is a blade making an incredibly sharp corner. Um, it's all only honed on one side so this the back side is flat but this is this is so incredibly sharp yeah. um, I was having to cut some canvas and uh, was taking bundles of it and just barely touching it and it was ripping and cutting straight through um, this is two layers of, of envelope with with tape and uh, I'm sure it will make quick Tearing the heck out of it. Well, quick work, quick work of it. Right. Um, we need something for the fireplace. Oh, that that's there's some tobacco in there. It's falling apart. Wait, there's tobacco um, in there. Yeah, there's there's a bag. I didn't cut the tobacco, but uh, this was I got this on sale. Keep an eye out on Amazon. I'm an amateur. But, what are but, you doing? This is from Dodif. Yes, we just smoked this. This is not. This I know. Is, Why didn't you take a picture? This is the of same. This. Okay. Well, you didn't tell me that. Um. Anyway. I highly recommend this. I use this. Uh, we use this when we were preparing the house. Um, this was perfect for taking 
um, screws out of the wall and leveling off the wall because it's got the, the flat edge. And so you can just take the drywall and just just slice it right as needed. It's such an oddball shape, but because of that, it just, it works. It works. It It's a little bit more expensive. This is a carbon version, so it is just sharp as the Dickens, also made in uh, Sweden. They have a bunch of different versions of these. Uh, we got to see a lot of them when we went to Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. Um, it I, has no, become... I bought mine from Amazon. You did get one? Yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I, I bought... Well, I got that chisel one. That's a great shape for a wood shop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I bought both of these off of Amazon. I think this one was, what, maybe... I think it was $11. Really? Yeah. So, so that was. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that one. This one's like eleven bucks. This one was like sixteen, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I think I got it when it was ten around Christmas time. Uh, very happy with both of these knives. Mm. I now keep them on opposite sides of my car, inside of the, uh, just inside of the door, just in case I ever need one. Uh, I always have a knife right there. Um, but I, I mean, I'm I'm a big guy, so carrying a knife. On my, close together too. on my, I cannot, you cannot because they're this not compatible. This one doesn't go with that. No, one? Um, hmm. you're right. The uh, no. I know, I I know because I tried to do it earlier this evening. <laughs> uh, uh, the the um, I'm a big guy, and so it's it's not usually comfortable for me to carry a knife on my on my waistband on my belt. These I don't have any problem with, and the clip is so easy to remove. And but it's designed in such a way that it's easy to get the knife in and out without fear of chopping your cutting your pants or, or anything. I'm just been really impressed. Yeah. Well, I, I I bought one and it's in my toolbox. I haven't I haven't used it. I've used it, but it wasn't one of those things where I went to the toolbox specifically for it yet. Ah. I went to the toolbox. I'm looking for something like oh this will work. <laughs> yeah. I mean I have chisels too so. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I don't carry things on my belt either. I used to always, always have a uh, a multi tool. Mm -hmm. Right. I started out with how many different um, Leathermen, and then I think I settled in on the Gerber. I had some success with um, what was that funky one that 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 unfolded like this. You know what I'm talking about? That was a um, charade. Uh, maybe probably pronouncing that wrong. <coughs> charade. I mean, Leathermans were the ones that yeah. would butterfly open. Yeah, and then I didn't like those because the original ones, because you were having to push on the hollow cavity. Right. And now the newer versions, they figured all that out and improved that. Gerber's were the ones for a long time that had to slide. That yeah. was always fun. I like that. That was always fun. But then the blades were inside, mm -hmm. which was a pain. But they locked nicely. Yes. Because that was the other thing I needed was a lock back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, for me, from a utility standpoint, I use a knife more than anything. And, and what, I've, what I've learned um, in my older age is that I, uh, you know, there, there are a few things that I, I can't do with an inch and a half um, small pocket knife. How old are you now? I am Think almost, about that. Think about that. I am... Think, think about when this video airs. I'm trying to. I am either almost or have just turned 33. You just turned 33. Happy birthday, son. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, you haven't talked about this yet, have you? Didn't I? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think you did. You should talk about that if you haven't. And if you have, well, we'll talk about it again anyway. It feels like I we're talking about knives. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, I I too picked up an odd knife, and I and I I bought a couple of these, and I carried one for a while, and finally got used to the way the thing functions. Um, but then I stopped carrying it because I just like the knife that I carry. Because you can't give it to somebody without them absolutely <laughs> slicing their hand. That is in half. so true. So here you go. No, this, let me this, see if I can figure it out. This knife is closed. Well, hold on a second. I'm going to show them how this thing opens. Well, I was going to... Okay. It yeah. opens by sliding it forward, and then it snaps in place, and you can lock it. All right? And it's got a super sharp blade on there. Um, and with it locked in place, it's it's never failed me yet. 
and then you flip the lock back and then this goes back down and the handle sheathes it. Okay, so now it's locked, you can unlock it. This is a Sanja knife, S-A-N-J-I-A. -A. Um, from what I understand, this is a knockoff. Some, some knife smith created this design. And the, the, the original version, I've, I've looked at pictures, I've never played with the one, it looks far superior to this. Yeah. Um, all right, so you want to give a little bit of a, of a push here. There you go. Yeah. Um, not the first time, but the second time I opened it, I cut myself pretty good with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't lock it, that point will come poking out in your pocket. Yeah. So it's really very much a novelty. Yeah. Um, Remember that knife that uh, had the pry bar, the, the pry bar that used the razor blade, that we got the five dollar version of that they sold three hundred dollar versions. Oh of? Yes. yes. And and how we talked about how there's no way a uh, three hundred dollar version of that is worth no. more than twenty dollars. <laughs> Correct. There's no way. You know, I still have that. I still use it on occasion. Oh, I, I have it too. Yeah. It, it is. It loosened up and is less annoying. After after that little hinge that was so tight, uh, finally, it? yeah, finally loosened. I think I keep it around here somewhere, actually. Yeah, That's there was one. Little, over, there was one over there on the bench. Yeah, good little utility blade. Do you right? Do you right? That's. This is scintillating. This, you're not gonna. Yeah. You're not gonna get this on PBS. Keep talking. Now I don't see it. I got nothing more to say. All right. Well, the second that you end this video, I'm going to find it. So. Of course. So let's wrap it up then. <laughs> All right. So just as I said, this pipe is vastly more enjoyable for me with the short bit on it. Yeah. Um, I still am not going to gravitate towards this because that, that I like to clench a pipe and that's just added weight. If you are holding this in your hand, that's fine. <coughs> it feels fine. And, and, and that rim is a little mm. bit easier to hold on to. Um, as I said, very, very similar to that Outlaw series. Um, if you pardon the pun, the jury is still out yeah. on the Outlaw series. I don't... The pun has not I'm gonna, been I'm going to link that video down below because I want your opinion of that because I'm not sure that I really want to sell that for beyond the couple dozen of each that we purchase. Okay. I, I, I just, I'm not, if it's not something that folks are excited about, there's no point in having it. Right. So, let me know what you think. I'm also going to see if I can get that, that thing off the side. See if it's a, if it's just a pad printing. Uh-huh. If I can, if I can remove that and not make the pipe look hideous. Okay. What do you think of uh, Dota's chocolate? It is not terrible. <laughs> That's not. Thank you for thinking of us, Dota, and participating, or at least trying to participate. I do think that this pipe is unnecessarily heavy. Uh, similar to that. So this Especially is, this if is the uh, uh, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Pipe episode of Mark yeah Men's Breakfast especially Club. since you're not getting any advantage on bowl size i mean the this is you can't smoke this all night without getting fatigued uh i mean it's not it's not a mr brog but we we have people who love that pipe i am no i'm I just saying yeah we have people who love that pipe yeah i'm tempted since it's cob foolery month I'm tempted to, to open that one up a bit and, and see, get a step bit or something, go at it with a couple Forstner bits. Yeah. And see if that changes the smoking qualities of it at all. I bet it would. Because there's tons and tons of meat there to, yeah. to modify. Oh, yeah, for sure. Top and bottom. Speaking of the Cobb Foolery Contest, close. and we'll wrap it up with this, Cobb Foolery Contest is going on too, and uh, to enter, all you got to do is modify in some way a corn cob pipe. Um, and the, the details on how to enter are over on the Aristocop channel. Um, last year we had sporadic entries in the amateur category and um, I, I didn't understand that because you don't have to do much. Just make your pipe your own and uh, 
enter it. There was somebody on the Corn Cob Nation Facebook page that did a beautiful pipe mod, and they, they took a uh, five star general, so that's one of the all, uh, all uh, variations on the uh, MacArthur pipe, and uh, they, they com completely changed the way it was configured, and they cut some things down and all that. And I said, I hope you're entering this in the Cobb Foolery Contest. Is now nah, I'm just goofing around. Dude, enter this in the Cobb Foolery Contest. That's that's what Cobb modding is. It's just mm. a bunch of folks goofing around, yeah. and you might actually hit upon something that's uh, worth worth copying. Yeah, or sharing, whatever. All right. With that, we're gonna wrap it up. Make it a great week. We'll see you again next week. Right see here, ya. same bat time. <laughs> same bat channel. Bye. <laughs>